Hey, what up, YouTube? How's everyone doing tonight? This is MTG Moxman. Welcome to my channel. Hope everyone's having a great day today. Uh, please hit the subscribe button and join us in our journey of talking about Magic the Gathering and other cool, obvious stuff in the background. Although Magic seems to be the main focus because I love this game. All right, so uh, short little update. As if you guys didn't know, because if you have Mox Amber and you see I'm MTG Moxman, you know I kind of love Mox Amber a lot. And let's let let's just face facts. It's it's bleh, it's tongue blowing. The card still is climbing, guys. It's almost thirty dollars. That's a lot of money. <laughs> okay, it is it is breaking past everything I predicted. I've gone back and looked at my spreadsheet, and I predicted twenty two dollars, uh, based on a few factors, which I'm not going to go into. Uh, twenty two dollars. Um, by the time January 2020 came around, and it's just just ripped by that. I'm, uh, I've taken a look. I'm chalking that up to um, TCG Player and some of the other Star City game stuff. Just the lack of, of supply. eBay as well. Although there's a couple of guys who put their cards around $25 today, I guess, to test everything, and they disappeared like that. They were gone. Um, so. That just tells you something. All the cards hanging around $32 are still moving, but they are moving slower. So so they're there, but they're not going quite yet. Now, um, welcome to the new uh, subscribers to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. And I I think it's awesome you have like 120 copies. Um, you guys can read the comments below from the previous video. And he was commenting that he had um, 120 copies himself, which is awesome because we all know, you know, we, we, lo we love the mocks. We love it. And by the way, Karn is still our friend. Because remember, nobody watches me. There's 57 of you now. There's one extra person. If I get one a day for a year, that'll only be 365. Wait, wait. I have to add those plus. Whatever. You know what I mean? It's not a huge following, and it's awesome. Um, I, I know eventually, you know, people kind of trickle in and stuff, and that that's fine. But I think it's kind of cool. So anyway, as we're talking, I just thought I had this last pack of Thornbow Drain Collector. Now these are the ones they gave out with the um, booster boxes, right? Um, so I don't know if they're mapped or not, like I've seen in Rudy's videos, which is kind of scary. That's why I'm opening it, because really the chance there's nothing there. But I figured, hey, let's have some fun. So I'm going to open this one right here in front of you all, because, um, you know, you never know what you're going to get. I did pretty good in the other pack from what people told me. All right. Uh, Charm Sleep. Ginger Brute. Ogre Errant. Come on, this is awesome. Even the names. This set is a good set, guys. Uh, bartered cow. Oh, that poor cow. That's a 4-4 cow. That is a tough cow. Okay. Uh, foil alternate art. Uh, Rose Thorn Acolyte. Very pretty. It's beautiful art. Uh, steel, steel Gaze Griffin. Waste of a card. What do they call it? Chaff. Who would pay five for a flying? And whenever you draw your second card, it gets plus two plus zero. Oh. That's ridiculous. Stupid card. Stupid. Turn into pumpkin. Which turn a non-land permanent to his owner's hand and draw a card. Well, that's not turning into pumpkin. You return it to their hand. Uh, wow, you get a food token. Waste of a card. Let's make Ford return something. Glass casket. Is that oh these are uncommons. Turn to pumpkins and uncommon? You know what I'm saying? Glass casket I get. Uh Foulmire Knight alternate art foil. Very pretty. That's an uncommon, so it goes over here. Then we have Order of Midnight Crow, uncommon. It is very pretty. Then we have Animating Fairy. And again. Let's be honest. This stuff is crazy, guys. Now, some of these prices, by the way, have really climbed. If you guys have been paying attention, like Oko and stuff is like going through the roof because of his play. Um, and I'm using him in some decks right now. And he is just... I'm using him with um, Hydroid Crasis to Nissa. I'll go over it in a second. Hold on. Let's, let's finish this. I'm getting... I get sidetracked, you know? Anyway, Fairy. Uh, Silver Flame Squire. <laughs> which is just a common in the other slot. Next card is a Garrison Griffin, which sucks. You know what? Let's go over here. Uh, my full art 
is a Black Lance Paragon. And I'll be honest, the artwork for that, for Rare, he is just beautiful, guys. Like, he is. And ready? Here we go. Last card. Let's hope it is something truly stunning and amazing. Something that makes me happy. Please, please, please be an Oko. That's not an Oko. That's crap. No, it's not. I'm joking. Um, Castle Embrith is not, is not guys. It, it's full art. It is pretty. It doesn't have a lot of value. But, I mean, it is pretty. So, it's fine. So, that was my last pack. Um, I don't think I have anything major there. But I got some pretty cards. That's cool. Um, now, let's get back to this. So, I'm using uh, green and uh, uh, green blue. I've got four opt. Uh, two Nissa, uh, four Oko, two Gilded Goose, Golden Goose, whatever it is, right? That make the food tokens. So I can pump it up fast. Two of the mewing guys who like you know tap for mana. Um, various planeswalkers, a uh, support characters like Karn the Great Creator to get extra artifact things I want to keep out of the game. Um, two Fae of Wishes that way I can go and get fairies that I need, right? Which is it really is helpful when you have these alternate cards sitting there in the sideboard that let you jump cards in later in the game when things have slowed down. You still have a way of cycling in cards fast, which is nice. Um, that that uh, one Ugin to deal with some removal in case I need it. Uh, four questing beasts so I can just turn them in. The Nyss has turned my lands into 6-6, six, six, or I'm using uh, uh, questing beasts to hit them really fast. I'm using Oko to get rid of any cards that could potentially hurt them. Like some guy got Torban out. And I immediately, on my turn, just turn him into a 3-3 three, three elk, <laughs> right? But it really stops it because I've seen the only decks I'm having trouble with are hyper-aggressive red decks. Um, I am 59-4 and four now, 59-4, and four, right? And the losses have all been to 59-6, uh, and 59-6, and six, and they're all to hyper-green decks, okay? They're all, uh, sorry, hyper-red decks. They're all decks that are just pumping out damage with the Cavalcade Calamity, and, and the uh, the Torban. I use it myself in my elemental deck because he just helps rip through when you put the um, the the Chandras in. But as, as an idea, I'm just saying it's a very good deck. It plays very well. But it's already become expensive to play just because Oko's just shot through the roof, right? And that's and that's hard to beat, guys. Like, like spending that kind of money, it is kind of pricey. I like when the Planeswalkers fall in price later on. You know, when they hit the, like, $8 mark. Um, I like when things fall down a little bit. I don't have to have things right away. Uh, I, when I do pre-releases, I play whatever I get, you know, when, when you, when you do your game there, but I don't often play major tournaments anymore. And I have a, a family. I don't get away that often. Um, and yeah, pause. Yeah. You leave me alone. I, I'm a happily married guy, man. You happy wife, happy life. But I used to be really, um, into it for a long time when I was younger, um, me and uh, Venture, who also is on, on here, uh, we we did tournaments all through uh, up until Tempest. And we placed top 32 in Canada many times. So we, you know, it was, it was pretty good. He played better than me, though. That's okay. I've learned a lot since then. It's not, not so easy. Um, so when, when you look at a deck like that that I'm talking about, uh, that, that deck will rock people. Okay, it'll do some serious damage very fast. And even if they can deal with some of your early stuff, like I, I had a counterspell deck today. He was playing against me. He thought he was really doing well. Didn't end that way for him, though, because eventually, uh, again, I used Karn later on because he thinks, you know, Karn's not going to do anything. I go and get the Magic Mirror, and now I'm drawing one card, then two cards, then three cards, and I already have all my land out from Circuitous, uh, Circuit or whatever, the one that's put two uh, basic lands into play, four to cast. Uh, I will take some hits to get that land out faster, so all I have is good cards to draw, and you're like, you know, that's really good, and it plays well against people, so, you know, a lot of people forget that when they're playing you, that, you know, all your cards have a reason. They have a purpose. So even if that card looks uh, inoffensive enough, which is somebody else's error, I have mana pumpers for a reason. I have blockers there for a reason. You should too, if you've constructed your deck correctly. You should know every card, what it's there to do, and what its job is. And if you can't figure out that card's job, then it's not in your deck. Get rid of it. Right? Just... Uh, and the only decks that seem to be able to hold up against Oko so far that I've faced off against is uh, Planeswalker decks from War of the Spark. Just a variety of mid-level, low-level Planeswalkers in the right combination. Um, I've lost to an Ashiok deck as well out of those hyper decks. 
that was on Arena, though, with the same type of deck. And he just got lucky. He was one turn ahead of me. And to deal with decks like that, I would have um, my clearing deck, which is like four Planar Chaos, followed by four Cloak of the Realm, four Time Wipe, all kinds of Sahilis and Okos and things just to pump out little tiny creatures. And you just keep clearing the map until they got nothing left and no card draw left. Then you pop in your Oko, you pop out Sahili and start getting things going, right? Um, and it's funny because most people think, oh, you're just wiping things out. Nice, great job. You think you got me, man? You, all you do is you have to steal me. Really? Steal me? I got four cards, you got three. I have two more removals and two more things to take care of you. And I wait for them to play first. Let them run out of steam. Plays beautifully, guys. Just an idea. Very cheap. Cheap deck. Nobody's really using the Realm Cloak Giant. And if you can, put other Giants in that match up with the colors you're using. In that deck, though, by the way, I'm using white and blue. I'm using Teferis and stuff in there as well. Um, that's why I'm using Sahili. She's red and blue, but I'm using the, obviously, blue caster. So it's kind of like, yeah, they're not really thinking it through when they see a deck like that. They're not used to seeing decks like that. But it, it does well against most types of decks uh, if you get the right, uh, you know, a fairly okay combination of land and stuff. So anyway, something to think about, guys, when you're going forward is those type of decks. It doesn't have to be expensive decks to win. It has to be well thought out, right? I, I had, oh, oh, story for another time. Yeah, you guys want to hear it, don't you? I know you're thinking I was going to let it go, but went to a pre-release. This would be, ooh, Origins, Magic Origins. And cons on the cons block had gone through. And I had done a silly, you know, they had those uh, charms. You know, the, the three casting costs, all the Tamir charms and all these different ones. All these, like, they all did little weird things. I built a deck around that. And some guy had these, like, Jace Rin Prodigy deck, Snapcasters, all this crazy stuff. And we started. We sat down and started playing. I said, "You know, you're gonna be like, I'm just, I'm just. It's a horse around deck. It's just for fun." He goes, "Yeah, I just want to play, test this out, and see how it runs." And at first, everything looks okay. For his first four turns, it was okay, but my hand's full of charms. So I'm like, "Oh, well, this charm unsummons this guy back to your hand, and I get a one-one creature." He does something else. Oh, well, this unsummons that, and I get a one-one creature. And then with this, it gets plus two, plus two, and then this lets me draw two cards. And it was all these ridiculously little things. But that one particular, game, this deck never wins, guys. It plays. But it never wins. And it just had that game where everything went well and there was nothing he could do. And his face went from calm, like, okay, I gotta get this, okay, I see, I see, okay, to what the are you doing to me? How is this even possible? My deck's like a $600 deck. That deck's like 13 cents. Yeah, I know, but sometimes 13 cents wins. And it was really bad. Now, I've not taken apart that deck. Since that day, it just sits on my shelf over there um, because, I'll be honest, it's kind of funny to watch it play. Uh, once in a while, I play it with a couple of friends, and it doesn't win, but it plays. And it's very funny to watch a deck like that play off against other people. Every deck you play is not always about winning. It's about having fun. And, and I don't care. I played my son tonight with... Uh, uh, an old white weenie deck with, you know, white knights and white uh, knight of the white orchid and, and some pumping up cards against his fairly, fairly, you know, it's got War of the Spark cards and stuff in, Gideon Osworn and stuff like that. And I thought he would have had a better chance. I smoked him every game. I mean, he didn't have a chance. And I felt really bad because uh, he got a little bit frustrated, but there's nothing he can do. So I'm like, dude, it's okay. Like, you lost. It's okay. You played four and I swept four. It's fine. It's going to happen all the time. Don't stress about it. Play the game and enjoy it. Learn from the experience, which I do all the time. Sometimes a deck I go, do I have something to deal with that? Because I, you know, I get beat sometimes I go, ooh, I didn't think about that. And even if you just add one card into your deck, right? Like take out an opt, add something in. Just so you have the, I always say you play if you have a percentage chance of, of at least going forward. When I know I'm outmatched, I don't mind conceding the game. But if I have a chance, if things are not that far behind, I don't give up, man. I fight to the end because I'm having fun with it. I want to see, ooh, what are my chance of drawing that? I got like 20, 30 cards left, and, and I got like 10 land out. So that's 50. It, it's okay. It's okay to have fun, guys, with magic. It, it's okay, right? And I think people forget that sometimes when they think about the value and the prices. And this was, you know, this the, I probably lost tonight. I don't really keep track of this stuff. Uh, for these specialty ones, I probably lost. It's fine. I don't care. It was free with the with the case, right? So what do I care? I got one for each booster box I bought. He gave me six. I've opened them all now. I just thought we got some new subscribers recently. Why not have some fun and open it, right? 
Anyway, thanks again for tuning in, guys. This is MTG Mox, man. Please hit the subscribe button if you like my videos. I would love to have new people join us. Um, I probably will do a video on the weekend when I'm up north again. I have some long work to do, but I'll make sure to uh, drop in a little video about, uh, about uh, something that comes to my head, I'm sure. Okay? You guys have a wonderful weekend. Loved talking to you guys tonight. Hope you enjoyed the content. Don't be shy, man. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's something you want me to look up or learn about. I'm happy to do that for you guys. You deserve it. You deserve nothing less. Thanks a lot, guys. MTG Mox, man. I'm Audi. Cheers, guys.